Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abel. Welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and Eastern Resurgence 2 with Stalwart Bucharest. We are taking on Kindia Targoviste in today's game. A team that beat us four goals to one in the away game, but they are fourth. We are just four points ahead of the team in bottom. It's looking a little bit little bit unsteady at the moment in terms of you know our fight against relegation but we do have two games in hand hopefully today we can uh, get a positive result trying to avoid defeat we have managed to win a couple of games off camera which is nice because before that we'd had about nine matches without winning so things are looking a bit better than they were but um yeah we need to, we, we need to get some more wins to you know try and see us through this uh this part of the season uh, as always if you enjoyed the series do drop a like down below and leave comments it's the best way to support the channel and if you haven't done so already or if you're new then do subscribe and turn on notifications uh let's get into it so the last time we met uh, we offered absolutely nothing at home against a vitual we had one shot and that shot was in like the 90th minute um but we only lost one nil retari with a late goal we almost managed to get a point from this somehow if we'd have won imagine that if we'd have completely fm them with one shot that would have been really something but um yeah we lost one nil and luckily in our final game before our winter break we did pick up a win as i said we went nine matches without winning uh, and then we came up against the our fellow promotees of voluntari and won three goals to one in a really good performance. And I said we needed to change the tactic a bit. I did for this one and we won. So I kind of stuck with it for a bit. Uh, it was a 3-1 victory. Uh, two goals for Nezovic. And one goal uh, for Dragici, um, our new right winger that we've signed. Who, apart from this game, hasn't really been very good. But um, a, a good performance here. Yeah, Nezovic. Uh, with um, a brace in about five minutes. That was after a goal this first half. Dragici with a goal five minutes from time. And then uh, a consolation goal for Voluntari Zotov with that. But um, yeah, really, really pleased with the performance. Our passing was really good. We created chances. We had a number of shots on target. A deserved win. And one I think that's been long overdue. And amazingly, we actually got back-to-back -back wins. Um, after the winter break, we came back and took on Hermannstadt away from home. Hermannstadt, a team that defeated us in season two to deny us promotion to the top division, which is good because I think if we'd have got promoted uh, that season for season three, I think we would have stood, stood even worse chance. I think we would definitely got relegated because we would not have been ready. But a 2-0 win away from home as well, and an away win is nice uh, against Herman Stat. Uh, this time, both goals coming in the first half. Popescu with a goal inside three minutes, uh, and then Nezovic adding another goal on 37 minutes. So yeah, again... Good performance and a clean sheet as well, which is always nice. So Grayab's back in goal. Unfortunately, we did then go on to lose our next three games, first of which was away against Astra uh, Georgiou, or George, I think it's Georgiou, um, a team that we beat in the opening day of the season. Amazingly, didn't think we would. Uh, a 2-1 defeat here. We weren't too bad here. You know, five shots on target. Um, they were just a little bit better than us. Um, again, we edged it possession-wise. Uh, managed to get one goal, but um, yeah, we lost it. Uh, lost it in the first half, and they had two goals disallowed as well. Uh, Skordiuk and Druga scored the uh, first two goals for Astra, or the only two goals for Astra. Uh, Nezovic pulled a goal back on 53 minutes, but that's all we could get. We didn't manage to get that equalising goal this time round. We have had some good comebacks in the past. We've got a comeback from 2-0 down um, earlier this season. This one, though, we couldn't quite make it. Uh, then we had our eternal derby away from home against Dinamo. Uh, this one ending three goals to two. A frantic sort of last few minutes here. Um, but ultimately coming uh, on the losing end this time around after a 40 win at home. That very much relying on Dinamo's mistakes though as they gave away two penalties. Pleased with how we did in this one. Um, some players not doing too well. Morong has been a disastrous signing. He really hasn't done well for us. They went ahead inside the first minute of the second half. Pantish with a goal. Uh, Nezovic equalised on 69 minutes. Uh, and then Dinamo went back ahead and Mugarianu on 75 minutes. Uh, East Bass then with another equaliser on 84 minutes. Uh, and then the following minute, Barney scored the winning goal for Dinamo. And Egoisku had the ball in the net late on as well, but that was disallowed. So, yeah, last sort of five, six minutes, very frantic. But unfortunately, it's a 3-2 loss. And then it was our third defeat in a row away against Polytechnica Yashi. I think we were unlucky to lose this one. I think we weren't quite on it defensively here. Um, I gave Dean Betts a rest and started Malanaka and Brisanovic at centre-back. Both left-footed centre-backs, though, so um, maybe not the right choice. Um, we just... The midfield is really bugging me at the moment. That that seems to be where our problems are lying. Is like our midfield just aren't doing very well. Um, but we lost four goals to two here. Uh, it was a 
it was a horrible first few minutes. We were 3-0 down inside 16 minutes. Uh, Grosso with a goal on six minutes and then Balore with a brace uh, to make it two and then 3-0 for Yashi. Uh, we did respond, uh, Dragiti with his second goal for us uh, on his 23rd minute um, just to pull a goal back and give us a bit of a lifeline. We did then make it 3-2 in the second half. Popescu with um, a 57th minute goal. And we, we tried and tried and tried for that equaliser to get it to 3-3 from 3-0 down, which really would have been something. We had a big chance, but unfortunately, Yashi went up the other end in the 92nd minute uh, and scored the fourth on Gurunazu with that. So a 4-2 loss here. Um, I think a tough one to take. I don't think we deserve to lose this one. Um, we were good in some places, but yeah, unfortunately it was three losses in a row. But at least I can say we won a couple of matches off camera. I'm okay with that, I think. The problem is when we split, unlike in the previous um, season with the uh, promotion group where you kept two of your points, uh, in this group, if we're going to be in the relegation group, but after 30 games, our points are halved. So things look a little bit, a little bit worse because if you think if there's a four point gap like there is now when we go into the re relegation group that gap is going to be reduced to two and at that point if we lose a game and they win a game like the teams below us then they're going to overtake us and we are really staring down a barrel of relegation there which we really don't want this is where things just sort of get really really serious at this point where the points get halves uh yashi ended on 24 points uh, and they got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they had 26 points. Have I done that maths correctly? Yeah, so 25 points. So they didn't do very well in those 30 games. But then when they split, they did enough to stay up. I think up the, the point that we're at, we're currently on 19 points. I think if we can get to that 30 and get enough points in that relegation group, we should be okay. But it's going to be very, very tough. Been a little bit of transfer activity. We've had a couple of players join. Um, it was a couple of players that we sort of sorted out in the summer window. But because of the transfer windows in Ukraine, they weren't quite ready, ready to come over yet. But we have signed a couple of players. Uh, Timothy Sukar is a centre-back from Ukraine. Uh, he's joined us from uh, that team who I can't say. Um, actually, it was at Zorio. That was a loan spell. Um, but yeah, he's joined us um, on a free. And uh, 14 marking and 12 tackle is not too bad. He's a right-footed centre-back, so he can um, swap around with Betts um, better than Prasanovic can. Um, yeah, doesn't look too bad. Uh, he's on a two-year contract, so we'll see how he does. And we've also signed Andrei Kozlov, a Russian left-back, and very much one for the future. I think we might see him maybe next season if he continues to develop. Um, but physically, he's very good. Mentally, uh, he's aggressive. He's got a very good work rate. And his positioning and teamwork's good as well. Looking at our youth intake, actually, it might be a good one. Looking at this, we only have three cons. And that's to do with um, the, the kinds of players we've got coming in. It looks like we might be getting a good youth intake when it comes. So that's that's going to be something exciting for um, later in the season. But anyway, let's jump into the game. Kindia Targoviste are the opponents. Uh, suggesting making a few changes. I think we will bring Betzer back in because I don't really want two left-footed centre-backs. Um, but Betzer, I think, might be leaving at the end of the season. Uh, midfield, I don't know what to do. I think we're going to go Maximovic if he's fit. Okay, he is because Toma has been rotten. His form has been rotten. Uh, we're going to go Popescu. I think we'll play him as advanced playmaker, not shadow striker. Uh, we'll stick with his pass up top. Uh, Nezovic is good. Uh, we're going to go Nagoyscu. This team's doing all right. Shofren's sort of the informed player at the moment. He's not really done too much wrong. In terms of, you know, really underperforming players, Morong, as I mentioned, has been a really poor signing. Uh, Toma as well hasn't been too good. We just need a bit more creativity in this midfield, and hopefully we'll get that from Vasilescu today. There is a little bit of um, time in the transfer window, but we don't really have any money. So if we are going to get a player in, it's probably going to have to be a loan deal. Um, or maybe a free agent if we can squeeze out a bit of wage. Um, but yeah, I feel like we need a bit more in midfield because, um, yeah, no one's really playing well there. Uh, but as you can see, we have really thinned down the tactic. Um, I don't know if removing instructions is the best thing because you need to make sure that you're removing the right ones. Change the shape a little bit. I know it looks a bit asymmetric, but um, yeah, I thought just bringing Nagoyski back a bit deeper might help things out. Um, Vasilescu at one point was playing back here as well, but not really offering anything going forward. We're going to have to try a little bit of um, trial and error at the moment because, you know, what we were doing before that 4-2-3-1 just wasn't working. 
So, you know, we've got to we've got to do a little bit of trial and error now to try and fix what's wrong with this um, with this system. But hopefully we can get something today. You know, avoid defeat and I'll be pleased. Corner here fairly early on, which is nice. Uh, we're going to get anything from it? No, it's cleared away. Here is Nezovic. A nice early goal would really help things out here. That's good. Headed away. And his cost in. It's given back to Oprea, though. His Vasilescu to Manalake. And he's gone over the top for Reese Bass. Nezovic has scored. Five minutes in. And uh, it's a 1 0 lead. Reese Bass has picked up some goals here and there, but not been nearly as impressive as Nezovic. I didn't see how many goals he's got this season. I would say it's probably about eight, maybe. Which is nowhere near what he's going to get from last season. He got 21 goals last season. He's not going to reach that. But he's getting the goals for us, which I'm pleased about. Costin, how much space do you want on that right-hand side, honestly? I've got wide defensive line as well. But Oprea is just sitting far too narrow. Uh, it's not a great cross. And it's Popescu. There could be a chance to break here and get a quick second. East Pass was just straying offside, though. Here's Nezovic. Go on. Oh, he's not hit that right. I'm not going to make any shouts. We're winning. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> We're not going to do anything. Um, this is actually going a lot better than I thought it would. Kindy have had one shot at goal. We've had seven, and we're getting the possession as well. This is going a lot better than I thought it would. Here's Kubler with a corner for Kindia. And <laughs> there you go. I spoke too soon. Siku with an equaliser for Kindia. I mean, we've we've done well so far. That's one of the... I think that was their first shot on target, Kindia. And 10 minutes left in the first half. They've managed to equalise. We haven't really dealt with that set piece at all. There was three players around him. No one even went up for the ball. But I said, avoid defeat. And at the halfway point, we are doing that. So I'm pleased. Um, Kenya with a slightly high XG, I guess, because they scored from their set piece. Um, we're, we're looking good, though. It's, it's, it's level. And that's fine with me. If we can just avoid defeat, I'll be very pleased. If we can win, I'll be ecstatic. And, I mean, does someone want to tackle him? That's a blocked shot there. And Nezovic. Oh, here we go. Might have caught the players napping here. Nezovic. Come on, put through to East Bass. That's a good tackle. Oh, we didn't quite get it right in the end. I don't think he could quite make up his mind what he wanted to do there. Here's Takax. Great tackle there by Betzer. Here's Davids. And it's a blocked shot. And Popescu's gone in and won the ball. Um, East Bass, what are you doing? Why did he not go to that ball there? He would have got there first, but he didn't even attempt to go to the ball. Here's Nezovic. Can we get back in front? Come on. Come on, Lovery. East, oh, East Bass is frustrating me. That was well wide, and I don't know why he didn't go to the ball when he did. I didn't mean to do that. Why did I just click that? Right, 83 minutes. It's still 1-1. We've only had a couple of shots on target, but I'm pleased with how we're done. Popescu's knackered. We're going to bring on Marong. Hopefully, he can do something. We're also going to bring on uh, Manea for East Bass. Double change. About three minutes left. Here's Marong. Vasilescu. Oh, again, we, we can't win those battles in the end. Nagoyescu maybe could have got to that, but we'll see. Here's Betzer to Maximovic. Morong. Come on, Manea. Oh, he's hit the bar. Oh, that was the chance. But it looks like we've got a draw. Okay, I will take that. Um, Not a lot of shots on target, but we scored the one important goal, which is all that we needed. Uh, a good defensive performance. Every point's going to count, and we've made it to 20 now. 11 games to get 10 points, and I think we'll be okay. Hopefully, we can do enough in those playoffs to um, to stay up. Now, we've both opened the gap to five points from the bottom. So, yeah, I'm satisfied with that, actually. Actually, really pleased we've got those wins against Herman Staten Voluntari, because if we hadn't have won those games, we would have been second bottom. So, really, really important results, those now, looking at things. And Clues bottom as well. If we can beat them, guys, um, we've still got to face them one more time then we should be clear of that bottom three and hopefully clear enough that they can't close that gap when it gets to those playoffs because there's only um, nine more matches in the playoff because I think it's 10 teams. But hopefully we can get some more wins in our final um, 11 games now. And we've got FCSB next, which I can't imagine us getting anything in, but I'll give it a go. I think the simple thing to do would be go to Croyova, University of Croyova, five games off camera. Uh, and then after that will be five more games. We might do a double after that for Clusion Hermannstadt um, to try and see us over the line and into those playoffs. There's some tough games off camera. FCSB, UTA and Sepsi. 
all very tough games. I think we're all five are going to be tough. Do we need any more players? I don't know that we do. We're already overspending on wages. We've got no transfer budget. So any signings are going to have to be free loans, which, you know, I should hopefully be able to get one. I don't know that we need one, though. We've got a while in the transfer window. Something needs to change in this midfield, and I don't quite know what it is. Um, maybe the roles, maybe some... Um, Maybe some like movements of some sort. I mean, like, Simovic is suspended for next match, which isn't great. But something needs to change in that midfield because that's where we're losing these games. We're just not creating our chances. And we're just not controlling the midfield. So I'll try and do something about it, but I don't know what that is. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, do drop a like down below and leave comments. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. We've got uh, Crowover next episode. Uh, we'll try and pick up some more points off camera. Um, and get close to that 30 and then hopefully have enough that we can be in a good place once we split into the playoff groups so we'll see how things go but for now thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon goodbye